I've already shown you how easy it is to set up a great looking live stream using the available themes and layouts provided by XSplit Gamecaster. But what if you don't want to use those? What if you want to make your own layout or you already have branding assets to use? Well, what do you think we're here for? In this episode, I'll show you how to set up a layout from scratch. I'm Eagles Vox and welcome back to my XSplit Masterclass, sponsored by XSplit. By this point in the course, we've covered all of the basics, so I'm showing you some advanced usage of XSplit Gamecaster. Remember that every episode, if you're looking for those basics, are linked in the playlist in the description below. Go check them if you have any questions, I've already answered them already, and if you want to download XSplit, use my affiliate link to let them know I sent you and keep supporting tech education. You know the drill by now. To get started editing your scenes, of course, go ahead and open up XSplit Gamecaster, maybe make a new set, and then we're going to flip on over to the desktop and get started. This XSplit Masterclass is also brought to you by Owned. Owned has lots of cool graphics. You want your stream to have that? Wow! Where'd you get that effect? Owned stream designs can do that for you. You got avatars, you got logos, you've got alerts, you've got stinger transitions, you've got layouts, you can preview them in real time. They're really cool and you can fully customize them and they're easy to use. Go to eposfox.gg slash own3d, link in the description, check them out and upgrade your stream today. All right, first things first, we're going to make a new set to work from. That way we're free of any theme sources or widgets or anything like that. Because again, we're starting totally from scratch here. So I'm going to click plus to create a new set over on the left. We're going to give it a new name. We're going to select an icon that represents what this uh, set is. Super easy. Somehow I can't decide on one. We'll go with that one. That's fine. There we go. Now we're fresh. Time to make a new scene. Click add scene. Create your own. Well, that's blank. That sucks. What gives? Well, we we have to actually add stuff to it. But the cool thing is, is that with Gamecaster, it's not actually blank. Although it's taking a second to load here. If we click on the scene, you can see it always adds your main source, which is your game, whatever game capture form that takes, be it whether you assign it here as a uh, capture card or a window, you know, window game capture or what have you. It is always added to your scene so that you never end up accidentally just making a scene and streaming a black screen for hours which is something people have done and left snarky comments to me about hover over your scene and you have a few different options such as duplicating the scene scene deleting it editing it of course which we'll cover in a second and renaming it we're going to rename it we'll just call this uh we're going to make our main scene first so we're going to call this just main and now we click edit scene all right, here we have our scene editor and the black screen is just our main source. If we hide it, we have just a default image in the background there. That's fine. We're going to turn this back on. So this is going to be our main gameplay face cam scene. So we need a few elements. We need our face cam for one. So add widget sources. We're going to add our camera source. Okay, nice. Bring it over here. Next, we want a frame for our webcam, right? So I'm going to click add widget again, and we're going to bring in a custom video source. And we're going to add the webcam frame created by my personal, the person that I hired for graphics design to make me some stream graphics. But you can also pick these up from sites like our, uh, one of our partners owned over at eposfox.gg slash own3d. They have a lot of great stuff just like this. I'm going to go ahead and pull in my webcam frame video here. That is the four by three one. Here we go. Epos Vox overlay. Yeah. Make sure that's working properly. These should be in WebM format. Go ahead and upload it. Of course, this is really, really big. So we will need to shrink it down a tad and you can use these little controls here. Now don't stretch it too much. I probably should not have used this exact control for it because I am not locking the aspect ratio but it's it's totally fine so we want our webcam like right here in the corner come back to our camera source and we want to you know kind of line that up make sure it's filling the frame so you don't see like the game behind it in the frame but you don't want it sticking out the other side of the frame all right so now we have a basic scene we have our if we turn off the main source here we have gameplay with our face overlaid not too shabby pretty cool but there's more that we can and should probably do. For example, we don't have any alerts, so we should add them. A cheer alert. Now these won't have any graphics, although we can add animations in and out. So we can say bounce in. Yep, that looks good. Animation out. Flip out. Yep, I like that. That's fine. We can change the we can change the audio here if we like. If you have any sound effects. So for example, 
I have a sound effects folder. I can add a goofy little... There we go. Good enough. Use. We're going to turn down the volume on that quite a bit because that would get really obnoxious. You can change the color of the alerts. Again, this is if you're making your own. If you're using the theme, you already have a lot of this set up. Username animation. Pulse. That looks right. That's fine. Bit amount color. That should be in bright red. That's fine. Bit amount animation. Wobble. There we go. That looks good. We can save our progress as we're going. But now we need to do that for every alert. So that was a cheer alert. Follower alert. There we go. All of our alerts, they look kind of ridiculous, you know, stacked on top of each other. But of course, if we save and then close out, obviously you don't see them normally because they're not actually present. You can see here also by looking at the preview, I do have a little bit of a black bar showing that my webcam doesn't fully fill this, the frame. It's a little hard to see it in the scene editor here. So we are just going to make it ever so slightly bigger to do so. This is what trial and error is for. All right, so that's fine. So we got our alerts. We got our webcam. We can add some other things that we might like. For example, there are a lot of sources. So you've got videos. You've got progress bars, video sources, icons, images, text, custom widgets. Under sources, you have your main sources, alerts. We already covered that. Labels. These are how you set up your recent cheers and things like that. So for example, I have an overlay that I can add that has bars to show my recent you know followers and stuff so i can go to video actually that's a youtube video we're going to add a custom video like we did before choose video to upload go back to my twitch files we're going to go under overlay feed panel there we go i'm going to click upload now this is really really big but what i can do is drag it under here to fit my webcam frame and then we are going to duplicate that. Drag that one straight down. I'm holding shift so that I can keep it lined up, you know, with those green bars. So I can always keep it in the exact same position there. And then I'm going to duplicate that one. And we're going to have three of these. Oh, I moved it sideways and said control Z undoes. Oh, control Z actually undid the whole duplicate. So maybe don't do that. All right. Now I'm holding it, holding shift. Dragging it down to roughly the same distance. Maybe a tad more. There we go. Now we have three of those feed panels. Now we start adding text to them. So I'm going to go plus text, add text, drag it over. We're going to say follow. Drag it here. We'll want to mess with the font a bit. All right, let's see what fonts we have available. Quite a few. I want something a little bit thick so it's easy to read. Yes, thick. Not Anton, that one's too narrow. ASAP looks good. There we go. Fit it into our text thing. I'm using the arrow keys to more precisely line it up here. Follow text. Perfect. We're going to click the text layer. We're going to make a duplicate. We're going to hold shift, drag it down, and we're going to call this sub. Line that back up how we might like. Use the arrow keys again to get it kind of exactly where we want. I'm actually going to move follow up a little bit too. Perfect. We're going to duplicate follow again and bring it down. And we're going to call this cheer. That looks lined up to me. All right. All right. So we have a lot set up here. We're not done yet, but we do have a lot set up and we might get to the point where we don't want anything that we've already done to move. For example, my webcam and my webcam frame and my alerts are totally locked down. I don't want to accidentally mess that up and misalign them and then go back to my scene and be really frustrated. So in order to avoid this, I'm going to click my camera source. I'm going to right click and hit lock widget. And this means that nothing I can do can move it around. Now you see I can move the webcam frame around still. So I'm going to lock that one as well. Now there is literally nothing that I can do to edit that unless I unlock it, which is a real time saver. I'm not going to worry about the alerts because it doesn't really matter where they are, but we are also going to lock down our um, follow and subtext here as well once we get to that point because that will be important. So next we're going to add another widget. These are going to be under labels. See, we have cheer, follower, subscriber. Those are the ones we're using. So we're going to start with cheer, cheer label, and you can see here it already has the recent cheers thing. We don't necessarily want that. So the cheer label is actually added as two different texts. And we don't want the first one because we're doing our own. So you come over here under cheer label. There is, if we minimize it, it has two different elements here. 
two different text fields. We're just going to delete one. And now we have the actual most recent cheer. And we can drag that up a little bit. Make it a little bigger, fit it in here. Resize it. We do have control over the text, so we can come back here and choose our font. Already forgot which one we used. ASAP, there it is. We can make that bigger. We had the labels at 24, so we can just put in 24. Line that up how we want, and bam, we now have a cheer label. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to add a follower label. Drag it over here a little bit. Again, we're going to delete the recent followers text. We're going to click this specific text. Change font to 24. You know the drill at this point. Then there we go. Now we have our label, our labels and our little bars. So I'm going to lock all of these so we don't mess them up. Cool. Now we have a pretty competent stream here. If you don't want to do the labels here, you could actually just use the event list, but I like using my own custom graphics and things like that. And actually, if I was doing my live show, I could even go and add a custom video for my lower third that I use for my streamer news show. But it's too big of a video file, so we're not going to mess with it right now. So our scene's looking pretty good. Uh, we have our alerts. I'm actually going to move them to the bottom. I know I said I wasn't going to mess with them. I'm going to move them all to the bottom so that we have a balance so that when things show up, it's not all taking over the same part of the screen as my webcam frame stuff. There's a lot of different alerts. There we go. We're going to click save. And we're going to close it. All right, so that's step one. The, the account that I have synced up does not have subscribers or cheers enabled because it's not an affiliate, but th th this is fine. You get the idea. So that's a pretty good start to how things should go, but we're not done. We don't need just, you know, one scene. We want a couple scenes. So I'm going to make a new one, click add scene, create your own, and we're going to call this one starting soon. No, we're going to call this one intermission, intermission BRB. We're going to edit it. This is for when we need to step away or when we're not showing what's on screen, just in case we need to hide anything. So I'm going to hide the gameplay because, again, we don't want that shown. We're going to click Add Widget. I'm going to add a custom video, and this is just going to cover the entire screen. So I'm going to come back to my assets. We're going to under my screens folder. Again, this is how they're going to be laid out if you buy them from any place like owned at eposbox.gg slash owned or Nerdedye or other sites like that. So I have a BRB screen that's in WebM format or MP4 format. I'm going to click and add that, and I'm going to click Upload. It's just a loop, 40 second loop of an animation to cover the screen. Unfortunately, it says it's too large. So I'm actually uploading my video to YouTube in this case because you can only upload videos of a certain file size up to XSplit's little cloud service. And so what I'm going to do is I'm uploading it to YouTube as unlisted so that only I can see it. And we're going to turn off monetization just to be safe because we don't want, you know, ads playing if it's playing through XSplit. We're uploading it to YouTube, and then we're going to use that URL as a video source here as soon as it is done processing. And this is a cool little workaround that XSplit gives you here. Waiting on YouTube processing. All right, so the video is done. I've copied the URL. I'm coming back here. I'm going to add a widget. I'm going to add a video. Add widget. And then under the video URL, I'm going to paste that YouTube video URL. I'm going to turn down volume, even though this doesn't have any sound anyway. We're going to resize it to fit our scene here we're going to click save we're going to close and now if we go to brb i gotta I got adjust the size a little bit because it's still got the black bars on the side because i didn't stretch it exactly but it's playing our video so we have our brb scene it's a workaround but it works all right next we want to set up different transitions so you have a few different options here uh, and I cover this later in the transitions video and even show you a workaround for making your own stinger transition. But I'm actually partial to the move left and right and move up and down ones, even though they look a little silly. But because they look like interlacing lines for my old, you know, analog video style. And I think it kind of works. So here we've made two scenes and we're actually going to make one more here. Create your own. We're going to rename it. Nope, I just duplicated it. We're going to delete that one. Yes, delete it. We're going to rename it and I'm going to call it webcam 
And actually for both of these, I want to use a different widget type. So I'm going to go to edit on the BRB first because I forgot I wanted to add it to this because we just have the video here. But if anyone follows or subscribes or anything like anything like that in that amount of time, then you won't, you know, have an on-screen notification for it. So we're going to go to add widget. We're going to go to, it's under one of these. There we go. It's under miscellaneous. Of course, the last one, there's an event list. We're going to add that. It's already got its own graphics and stuff. So we're just going to drag this to... Actually, yeah, I'm going to keep it in the top left of the screen. And then just for fun, I'm going to add a widget. And we're going to add chat as well to the screen. And put it kind of in the bottom here. That way there's chat going as well. And I'm going to click save. And we're going to close this one. So now when we're on the BRB scene... We have our recent events, and then if chat is popping, it will show up here. Pretty cool. Now we're going to do the same thing for a just chatting scene with this webcam scene. I'm going to edit it. I'm going to hide our main source because we don't need it. We're going to add our camera source. We're going to make it full screen. Drag it to fill the entire screen. And we're going to add those same widgets. So under miscellaneous, event list. I'm going to keep that in the top left. Actually, I'm going to put that one. Yeah. I'm going to keep it kind of over here. And we're going to add chat and also keep that on the left here. And if you didn't like the event list, you could actually add... Uh, they have a ticker. It just shows the most recent followers and stuff. So you could actually add that over here as well. Just make that really long to go all the way across the screen. Pretty cool thing. So now with our event list, our ticker, our chat, we can save it, we can close it, and now we have what would be a just chatting scene here, ready to rock. With minimal effort. Pretty cool. Alternatively, alternatively, we could do it a different way. I can click add scene, create your own, and I'm just going to run through this super, super fast speedrun style since I've already shown you everything. We'll call this just chatting in case you wanted a different variant. Instead of your main scene, we're going to add a custom video. I have just my screen animation without any of the background. But again, that needs uploaded to YouTube because it's a little too big. So I'm going to get that going. So what we're going to do is we're going to have an animation running in the background. And then we're going to have some text. And we're going to have our webcam added over top. So we're going to add widget, sources, camera source. We're going to make it pretty big. But we're not going to do too much with it yet. Because we also need to add a custom video for our webcam frame. We have already uploaded that one, my videos. Ebos Vox overlay should be it. Yep. And we basically want this to take up most of the screen. So we're going to make it be like that big. Drag it over here. That's about fine. Come back to our camera source. We want to resize it to fit within this frame here. That's looking good. It automatically moved it down below, which is pretty clever. I like that. And then we want things on the sides. Let's see if we can get... That move just a little bit and then move the camera source you know with it there there we go we're gonna add under miscellaneous again just like we had before we're gonna add chat over on the right this is super roughly put together but you're getting the idea we're gonna add widget we're gonna add a ticker at the bottom and you can customize the fonts of all this and everything so that you're not you know making it too rough we're gonna add general text Add widget. We're going to call this just chatting. Same font as we were using before. There it is. We're going to crank that font up. I'm going to fit it. Okay, 100 is a little too big. Make the font size a little smaller. Fit it up here. You know, we can do different things. We can make it bold. We can add, oh, there's a stroke. Yep, that's what we want. So we want a black stroke around it so that it stands out. And it needs to change the width of the stroke here. Five pixels, that's too much. Two pixels, that's a little too much. So one pixel is fine. Now it has a stroke, it's going to stand out. We're going to add our video background. So that's under video, add widget, paste our YouTube URL that we had before. And we're going to drag it to, again, fill up the entire screen. And we're going to drag that all the way to the bottom above the main source. That way everything else is below it. We're going to click save. We're going to close it. 
And now when we switch to the scene, other than our camera not showing up for some reason, um, <laughs> camera source, it is definitely there. That's confusing. Save. Okay, our camera's deciding not to activate for some reason. I'm sure there's a reasonable explanation. But you get what I'm going for here. Y you get it. You ever look at the Elgato Stream Deck and think, Man, I wish I could have all of that power in the palm of my hands. Well, now you can. Install the app on iOS or Android, connect your Stream Deck software on PC, and start setting up your program launchers, CPU monitors, button to control your key lights, and stream scene switching, all within minutes. It doesn't get much easier than this. Try it free with the link in the video description. And there you go. Now you have the skills to build your own theme within XSplit Gamecaster and set up lots of cool custom scenes to really help your stream stand out. I can't give you the artistic ability to make cool assets, but I can give you the tools and skills to use them, at least. Thanks for watching this episode of my XSplit Masterclass. Hit the like button if you enjoyed, subscribe for more tech education and stream guides, things like that. I'm Epos Fox, your stream professor. I'll see you next time.